plus tax. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host for this evening. My name is G. Holland. Uh, you'll find this radio interview on ghollow.com, ghollowradio, fmgmedia.net. And no further ado, we have uh, an awesome guest for this evening with this new dope movie called White Folks on My Celebrity Life. How you doing this evening, brother? What's happening? What's happening? It's Gideon P. Serrata, outlaw filmmakers in the house. All right. No doubt. No doubt. Thank you for calling in. I appreciate that. And let's just jump right into it. So we can get a better understanding of who you are, where you come from, you know, that type of thing, and also what the movie's going to be about. What's your background when it comes to filmmaking and, and movie making and things of that nature? I've been doing movies for about for about three years. My first, first movie was uh, Yodi. Um, what is that? Okay, cool. My first movie was Yodi. Uh, came out um, 2015. You know what I'm saying? And we showed it all around, you know. Uh, got it on filmplug.net right now. So, you know, um, my next project I'm pushing out, you know, is White Folks. It's a um, feature film that we got going now that we're showing here in Atlanta and abroad. Okay, cool, cool. So ever since being, like, a youngster growing up as a child, growing into adult manhood, malehood, what were some of your favorite movies that you liked, that you enjoyed looking at over and over and over again? Oh, man, oh, man. Like, uh, Blues Brothers <laughs> is one of them. You know, some Bruce Brothers is a classic. You know, Goodfellas, um, with uh, Ray Liotta. You know, um, uh, it's a it's a number of different ones. You know, I I like Baby Boy. I like, um, you know, a lot of John Singer and Spike Lee stuff. Um, you know, uh, Book of Eli. You know, that was a real dope movie that that went over everybody's head. You know, so um, I'm just I'm just a film film buff, if you will. You know, Pulp Fiction. Um, I mean, it, it goes on and on and on. Maybe you want to pull out my, my DVD collection right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know, like Hannibal. You, uh, you got me thinking about Hannibal, man. Okay. Those are good movies you name. It sounds like to me you a guy like you like those realistic, uh, like kind of gangster movies, you know what I'm saying? But seriously, some people don't know that revolutionary movies are just as gangster as looking at Goodfellas, like you're saying, or Casino. But you sound like one of them guys, like you like those, um, you know, real man's man type of movie where, you know, you got strong characters in there. You know, you got people that are um, knowing what they want. They're out to get to the money. that Nothing is going to stop them. That type of feel, just naming those movies. Like Scarface, too. I'm pretty sure you like that one as well. Another classic to throw in there, too. Okay. Uh, Minister Society, another classic. I watched Cartoon. I've been into it all, man. I was a, a comic book watcher, you know what I'm saying? For comic books. I love these comic book movies just coming out. All of that, Heart of Night, you know what I'm saying, Life. So, I mean, I watch, I watch a, a variety of different films, you know, um, most definitely. Adam Sandler, I like a lot of his joints. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, had some, he had some great ones back in the day, though. I ain't going to lie. He was killing it for a while there. So, for like, what, about five to ten years, he was just throwing them out. They right, banging, right. too. He, he was definitely doing his thing. Yeah, that's cool, though. Okay. Okay. See, like a, what about sci-fi? You into, like, Star Wars, Star Trek, into that type of thing? I mean, that whole Alien series, I rock with it. You know what I'm saying? With Sigourney Reaver in it. Like, the whole Alien series was dope. The Fly, you know, all of that, you know. Um, hell, yeah, maybe the, the Outer Limits, you know. So, I mean, yeah, you got me thinking now, man. Straight up. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ask you a real question, then, since you are a movie buff, and I like that because I'm a movie buff, too. Let's just say... Uh, what two trilogies would you put against each other for the battle of you watching them back to back all day long? Would it be something like a Star Wars, a Lord of the Rings, a Harry Potter, a Godfather series? What is two trilogies that you could put back to back in? Like you would just watch because you know that's about like twelve hours right there watching something like like especially um, Godfather. I think yeah, that's not right. Like 12 right. Hours, 30, 30. So so what, what's two trilogies oh, that you just watch all day? That, that's a good. You said uh, a trilogy that I can watch back to back. That you can watch back to back. I'm thinking like the right off the top of my head just hit me as Back to the Future, straight up. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Back, yeah. One, two, and three. I can watch it straight back to back. No lie. <laughs> I believe you. Um, you know what? It come on. It be coming on like CBS and all that other stuff. I watch it every single time. I know all the lines, and it's still exciting. Just like watching it for the very first time. And they like prophesied on the real on, on Back to the Future. <laughs> Half of that stuff they can't pass straight up. 
That is true. What, let's let's say this too. Let's say some of this stuff is social engineering too, because we know a lot of that technology they've been had for a very very long time. Because you look in these right, movies, right. you can tell. You know what I'm saying? Especially Star Trek. If you look at Star Trek, you see flip phones, you see iPads. You know what I'm right. saying? You see wireless devices where they, you know you can touch and speak to each other from long distances. Like all of that ion in it, um, ion what they call ion technology. And had that stuff for right. a very, very long time. You know, a lot of people don't know the very first computers, not only are we going to go back into ancient times, like in Africa, if we want to move up, they found this thing called the Amphicaparian device. They found, they said they mm. found it in the ocean. It's like at least 2,000 years old. So wow. you can only imagine this technology. You can look that up too. It's called the, the Amphicaparian device. I got to get the spelling on it. But yeah. So that's what's up. That's absolutely dope right there. And then, then you go back to, like, Shakespeare, which is, like, the earliest form of movies, which I thought was crazy. You know the history of Shakespeare? Like, a lot of the people that were putting on the plays, he would have, like, all men. So, like, the men was playing the women roles. That right, was right. insane. Can you imagine that back in the day? You back there, you got to do uh, whatever scene. And I'm like, nah, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it looked like it's making a comeback. You know what I'm saying? It looked like it's making a comeback. <laughs> All these Tyler Perry hey, you... joints, but shout out to Tyler Perry, no offense. <laughs> yeah. You ain't lying, though, bro. You ain't lying. And no offense to no preference coaches, but, man, that is insane. I love to see strong characters, strong male characters. We need to see that, not only for older men, but also little boys, too. They need to grow up and be able to see somebody, like, playing a role in white folks who was, like, strong, an alpha male. Yes, alpha right, males right. are not always agreeable. They're not going to always do the right thing, so to speak, whatever that may be, because everybody got a different understanding of morality and what's right. Some people survive, right. you know what I'm saying? You know, and then some people just riding. So I agree. I agree with you. And I appreciate you for making a movie like this, to showing those strong characters, strong alpha male characters. You know, you don't need to put no dress on and no heels. That ain't always funny, man. You could be funny in the men clothing, too. I'm just saying, you know, no offense to nobody, but I'm just saying we could do that, too. Hey, you are 100% right, though. You know what I'm saying? These are more superheroes out there, some real, real superheroes. You know, and we had them in the past, you know, when we was in control of our own images for that little short period that we did were in control, you know. So you you totally 100% right about that, you know. Okay. Now, how do you feel about this Black Panther movie that's coming up? What do you think about that? Think it's going to be a good one? Um, yeah, I think it's going to be dope. I like the way they got it cast. I like the way they got it set up. I like who they got in the film, and it looked like it's taking somewhat of a sci-fi edge to it too. You know, just looking at the previews that I saw of it, the outfits and everything is dope. So, um, yeah, I, I'm I'm interested to see where it's gonna go with it. You know, you know what, man? And you know, I need to <laughs> like straight up Hollywood work. One movie blow up. And then it's gonna have like thirty more that's gonna come after it. So I mean, it's it's important that Black Panther does well, you know. It is. I agree. I absolutely agree with you. And we need people like you too to make make out another versions of Black Panthers and the other comics that you grew up as a kid too. We definitely need. I know it's a whole copyright type thing and all that, but we need people like you who are interested in that to create that other diaspora so we can be into. Because like you said, man, no offense, you know, we got love for Tyler Perry, but I, those are not my type of movies. I look at them, but I, I ain't into that. You know what I'm saying? I'm more, I, I, I will put my personal opinion. This is Jihala saying this, ladies and gentlemen, so don't get mad at my guests on the phone. I'm saying this. I will put Martin up against anything Tyler Perry has made, and it ain't even touching it. It ain't even holding a candle and a light to it. And it ain't no disrespect, you know, but Martin, <laughs> the movie, stuff like Martin, Living Single, you know what I'm saying, Jamie Foxx. Those are iconic shows, and they have strong characters in there, too, strong male characters. I know they were the dresses sometimes with the shenanigans and all that, but still, most of the times, those are strong characters. I don't like that buffoonery, coonery. That ain't my, my thing, but, you know, that's my opinion. Right, right. Hey, hey and opinions ain't always bad, I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Just because it's a city. <laughs> but Martin Show was dope. Martin Show was a, was a classic. I mean, all his characters and everything, you know, so... Man, it's just like something happened like after a little bit after two thousand, something something was wrong somewhere. <laughs> you know, so um <laughs> I just wanna offer a new fresh breath of air, you know, to the industry and give them some creative ideas. It's like they're running out of ideas up there, you know what I'm saying? All these make flip flops. They are they are bro, they need they need people like you. They need people just like you to come in and sh- and sh- and 
moved away. Because like with the lady, um, Issa Marais, with the in- insecure uh, thing on HBO, showing the mm-hmm. awkward black people. I think that is dope. Like, I haven't seen it, but I've been watching, like, the reviews and looking at different clips and things of that nature, and I like that because it's showing one mode of a black woman other than just the angry black woman in every movie. She's angry, she's loud, no offense, or she's fat. Like, that's the, that's the typical, stereotypical role of what you see in every movie, even, like, Ghostbusters that just came back out. No offense to the lady that's in it. You know what I'm saying? She's pretty dope. But you got you got other different kinds of people that are different ways within the culture within itself. You got some black nerds. You do. You got some. They're, they're out there. You got some very right. intelligent, analytical James Bond type brothers. <laughs> so that's why I was I was I was almost excited when he was talking about getting like Ildis Alba to be the next 007. I'm like, yeah, that's what you need. You need that switch up, that change up. People don't be mad at it. Don't be upset. Don't get online and talk crazy. About this man, they right. think about him being James Bond. Embrace it. Embrace the change. You know, that's why, like you said, with the comic book movies, I liked it when they changed Mr. Biggs to, uh, what's his face? I'm sorry, God rest his soul, uh, big man from Green Mile, when he played, you know, um, was it Mr. Biggs and the Punisher? Oh, People were upset about that, you know. But you got to have that change. It, it, it is time. It really is. Everybody needs to shine. Every culture, every nationality needs to get their shine. So, what do you think about that? changing the characters, changing certain iconic characters from white to black? I mean, I, I tell you this. We got so many dope stories. We don't need to drop nobody else up, but it, it's, it's kind of funny because at the end of the day, it's probably something they took for us in the first place. <laughs> you know, you're going to look at our history and find out, yo, James Bond originally came from a cat in South Africa in 1850. You know, that's how it go. You know, I just found out that cowboys, there were no, there were like few white cowboys. But you don't know that when you was watching them black and white movies, you know what I'm saying, with um, John Wayne and all of that. The Cowboys were Mexicans, black, and Native Americans, you know, so they had to live the outlaw life because their job was so was so raunchy and they weren't getting paid enough as Cowboys, so they became outlaws, you know, and it was so fascinating. So they made a whole Hollywood fantasy about it using white guys. So, I mean, we'll find out later on if John, um, James Bond was originally a black guy or a Mexican or something. <laughs> <laughs> and they stole it and flipped it. But, uh, I'm glad that you brought that up. That is true. Because think about the word cowboy. When you split it up in half, they call black men boys when they would wrestle the cows. Like, go get that cowboy. So then that's how that word merged together and stuck together, too. A lot of people don't know that, too, as well. Because Bass Reeves was one of the, I think he's the one they, they refer to as a Lone Ranger. He had caught, like, hundreds of criminals or something like that. They say he was so bad back in the day that he was feared, but as time goes on, he slowly transitioned into a white guy. But he, you're right, he actually started out as a black guy. And you think about Superman, even that's about the black male, because not his name is Superman, but Kyle. When you look at the word L, L means right. son, and you trace that back. That goes back into Africa. That's where you get that E-L from. You know, you find a lot right. of moors now. They call themselves L, L Bay, and all that other stuff. So, but yeah, you're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. L also means, you know, Elohim or God in in um in Hebrew. So I mean, it's a, you know, it's it's a son of God connection there with Superman. You know, it's, it it gets a little deep. You know, um, that's right. But I think all these these stories have like a common narrative somewhere down the line. You know, and um, as far as I go, you know, I just want to bring, you know. Dope stories, and even if I do reinvent a story, you take a story and almost like remix it, you know, make it your own, you know, put your own style into it, you know. So, um, bring me to this new movie, White Folk, <laughs> inspired by Mr. Iceberg Slim, you know. Shout out to him. Okay. Now, tell us a little bit what you can, because I know you don't want to give up, give away too much. Tell us a little bit about White Folks. What can we to see or to know about this film? Well, definitely it's going to be a wild experience. I mean, um, so far the movie critics are comparing it to Pulp Fiction, comparing it to uh, Snatch, you know, the guy Richie joined. Mm-hmm. But um, it's about two con artists from the south side of Chicago who hustle the Russian mafia. Oh. And um, they end up in a position where they have to pay them $2 million in 14 days. So it's like their street skills get put to the test. All right, you've been cutting people all this time, so now you got this breaking two-week period to pay an insane amount of money back to these people that you should have never hustled from the beginning. And um, it just it just plays into the whole 
player lifestyle, which includes the con artists and pimps and gamblers, and it just includes the entire little um, play on the the lifestyle of the sporty life, if you will. You know, but it's not done in the cliche good fashion. It's done um, um, real, real ballsy, real bare bones, bare bones and uncut. You know, so uh, the public definitely, definitely gonna love it without a doubt. You know, I like that. That's a good. I like that. That's a good twist in there. Owing oh, that two million dollars for the restitution, that, that's that's gonna get real interesting then. Being these people don't have that type of money or have that type of influence to get that type of money, what would they right. do? Oh, man, that's cool. That makes you think. Put your what would you shoes. do? What would you do? <laughs> yeah. What would you do? Would you run? Would you hide? Knowing these people got connections there where you can't run, you can't hide, you're going to fight, you know what I mean? Like, they're going to come out to your family. That's a really good tale. I like that for you. Right, right. I mean, some situations you just don't need to get yourself into. <laughs> and there'll be no people out to it. You know, man, I, I felt sorry for the characters, man. I'm like, man, I'm rooting for you. I hope you do all right. <laughs> <laughs> but let me ask you a question. What would you do personally if you got trapped in a situation like that? Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I, I can't even say, man. I'd just be like, yo. I could be a good, I could be a good runner for you. I could be a good, you know, what I'm saying muscle man. How about you put me on the team? You see how it worked out? How about you join me on your team so I can work the other cats? You feel me? That I, I would probably try to cut them into putting me on their team or some shit because I don't see no reasonable way out there. Unless you got a stupid army behind you or something. Straight up. <laughs> September 16th, we're going down to the theater. Last theater, September 16th. Get your tickets at thebrownpapertickets.com. Going down. Going to do a players' ball theme too, you know that's going to be the theme of the red carpet event. So um, since it was inspired by a lot of um, black exploitation kind of films and you know the Dunner Going, Chester Hines, Ice Burst Slam type of book, he's just going to do like a, a players' ball type of theme, like an outcast tip, you know, for the opening. Okay, that's what's up. That's what I'm talking about. Because, you know, in um, Savannah, Georgia, Statesboro, Georgia, down towards the south of Georgia, they still do the players ball type thing. And that would be cool to have something to go to up this way too as well. You know, that's absolutely right. dope. So all the things out there, man, you know what I'm saying? I can get fly a little bit, you know, get your, get your, get your shoes with the, fish, with the fish shoes in there, you know what I'm saying? Remember, oh, uh, I'm going to get you sucker. When the dude was walking down the street, he had the fish bowl in the shoe. <laughs> he, was, he was seven. Thought he was a man. Oh, was- yeah. <laughs> And, uh, Are you old school players? Are you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I think he had to take the L on his shoe, though. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, the glass broke. Straight up. But, nah, man, real players know better than to do that. You know what I'm saying? We ain't going to come in there with the clown outfit. You know, we're going to be straight gentlemen. The brother's fit that you're talking to right now, my fit going to be off the radar. So, you know, it's just, I mean, real players who really do this, and shout out to real players who who – show love for this film and vouch for real, real street cats, you know. Um, you know, I want to represent for them and make them smile, you know. So we're going to represent for them that night like I'm a straight up. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We just clown around a little bit. But, yeah, you're absolutely right, man. All the, all the real players out there. And the love, man, we've got the game from you as it, as it passed down, and we're going to pass it down to, to the next generation. And it's absolutely dope. And I appreciate you being on the show, man, bro. We have been absolutely fun. Cool, enlightening to know. I love uh, speaking to other fellow movie buffs, man. We can just talk about movies all day long and talk about your movies, and we just put it in and just mix it into a pot. I think it makes a good dialogue, good good conversation. One thing that I learned, right. music and movies bring people together closer than anything else, you know. Instead of being out there a lot of times, um, like marching and stuff, man, I believe we all just sit down and invite folks or something and then have a conversation about it. It'll open up more doors than just marching around with signs. But that's just my personal opinion on that because there's nothing like a connection I mean, I, of seeing. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I totally, I totally agree. I totally agree with that, you, with the music and movies. I mean, it's, it's, it's a way to take yourself out of the your emotions and your mind out of it while still engaging, engaging yourself in what's going on and, and being able to see other people's perspectives and opinions. You know, so I, I love that. I, I definitely feel like people, when they watch this movie, white folks, that they are going to, uh, I mean, get engrossed with a whole other different perspective of the game, you know, mm-hmm. and the world. Because the world is a game. The system is a game. You know what I'm saying? So, the court, I mean, streets ain't got nothing on corporate America, straight up. 
straight up, and yeah. nations, how they run the world. You know, North Korea and America, they beefing like they Crips and blood. So it's just like, man, like, the world is the game. And and that's what this movie is mm. hitting on. Mm. So I totally agree I like with that statement, man. Great stuff. No, you, you, bro, you're absolutely right. you absolutely right. You know, you can look at the military uniforms. You're right. The one wearing green, the one wearing whatever, black. So you're absolutely right. <laughs> it's the same thing as the GDs and the <laughs> gangster cyber all. You're right. They beef them. Right, them, right. They you doing? They invading people's lands. Like they taking over the block. I mean, they just went in Iraq and took it over. Uh, give, give us this. This is our right, land. right. We're gonna control that. You're right. And people don't look at it from that perspective. They look at it from the perspective of oh, because it's political. Because people are in suits and they call themselves presidents. Well, hell, the leader of the game, the triple OG, is the president. He's the founder. Right, right, <laughs> right. Soldiers on the streets, the infant, the infantry. You're right. So I got you. I got you. to know. Before we let you go, we appreciate you calling me into the show. Um, could you please leave before we're gonna play a little movie trivia game? But could you leave a bit of advice, experience, wisdom, intellect that you've been doing this whole time to not only the youth out there that probably want to get into movies, or there may be fellow movie buffs like you and I, as well as your peers, as your elders, leave them with some game and some knowledge and something to grow and to learn and to ponder upon. I tell you this, um, everything I do comes to the power of Yahuwah Elohim and the Mashiach Yahushua, the black revolutionary Messiah. And so if you think you're going to do anything on planet Earth and be effective without touching down with the Most High and his son, I mean, lots of luck to you because you're not going to go that far. That's step number one. Number two, you don't got to have no permission to do your work. Man, if you got a dream, if you got a vision, if you got a camera and you got an idea, man, go out there and put together your idea. You know, use creativity over money. Use time over money. You know, use resources over all of that and put it together and it'll work. You just got to have the drive to do it relentlessly and ask no permission for nothing. Just do what you got to do. You know, do what you got to do to see that your vision is not only great for you, but everybody around you. And that's how you win, straight up, bottom line. Ooh, ooh, man. Okay, man, the game. They say the game should be so not told. So y'all just got some real cold game right there. I hope you're soaking this up. Play this interview back. It's free. You can hear it as many times as you need to be. For those of you out there that are following, subscribing, and rocking with us, make sure that you're hearing it from somebody that's in this industry doing what he do, fighting against all odds, beating all odds, and then just shining at, at everything he does. So, ladies and gentlemen, y'all make sure y'all check this movie premiere out. It's white folks. That's yeah, exceptional. Exceptional. You know, we're going to be, let's see, we're going to be red carpet. That's going to start at 8.30. Film starts at 9.30 at the Plaza Theater, which is 1049 Ponce de Leon Avenue, Northeast, ATL, Atlanta, or for the people that's from Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, 30306. Make sure y'all come out there and check them out, man. See what he got going on and be a part of this um, vision, this journey. And support each other. We all need support, love and support, not just the people on the top. We love the Spike Lees and all of them. Support them. It's also support my brother, too, man, because he needs you all. And he, he want to make more movies. I want to see more movies come from you. I want to see you get into some comics. You know, I want to see you get into uh, right. some Back to the Futures. I want to see your version of Back to the Future. I think that's going to be absolutely dope. It'd be a nice, different perspective. I got, I got, some, gang, I got some gangster stuff on board, man. I got these horror movies that I hit them. I got this zombie movie I'm going to do that I'll do any zombie movie you've ever seen, period. You Ooh, know what I'm saying? So, Porno and a zombie mixed up. Porno movie and a zombie mixed up together. So I let y'all chew on it for a minute. <laughs> I'll break it all barriers. I'll break it all barriers. <laughs> Bro, let me know. You know what I'm saying? I've been to Augusta, which is about two hours uh, to the east near like uh, South Carolina, but it's Georgia, Augusta, Georgia, where they play Masters at. So I got you number one. Boys, I'll text you mine and let me know because I know a lot of actors and actresses out this way. They're trying to get into stuff, they're trying to be more engaging. And I'll just send you people your way, so it's all good. And have the love on this side. Oh, word, well, shoot, man. Man, let me get your ID and all that. We link up after the phone call. Or okay. Cool, cool, cool. You, um, just follow me on um, I'm G Hollow, which is uh, G E H O L L A. I'll text it all to you. Um, underscore dot com, or I, I might tell you about it. I'll send it to you. Don't worry about it. I'll text it the right way. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, before we get out of here, we got to play. One game with our awesome director, creator. Now, do a little battling. You have a bag to pick up or a jackpot worth $600 million. In order for you to get that $600 million, you have to choose seven 
movies of all time that are the most highest ranked in history. Which seven movies would you choose to win that 600 mil? Now, these are the most voted movies for the best. They made the most money, per se, or they're the most iconic. Which seven movies so you can win that jackpot of $600 million would you choose? Oh, man. Jaws is number one. Number two, Psycho. Number three, Mm. uh, Godfather. Number four, Mm. uh, 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 damn, damn, damn. Uh, (laughs) Oh, <laughs> uh, you said six. All right, all right. I'll throw Paul Fix in there. Number five. Um, ah, uh, Braveheart. Okay, number six. Um, white folks. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> all right. Y'all was making it. <laughs> there it is. That's a nice September 16th, man. Y'all come to the plaza. You're going to see what I'm talking about. Straight up. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been an honor and a pleasure. Y'all make sure y'all be out there, man. Be on time if you can. 8.30, red carpet starts. Get out there, get your player suits on, get your pictures taken too as well. And then the film starts at 9.30. Again, that's the Plaza Theater. It's at 1049 Ponce Line Avenue. Northeast Atlanta, GA30306. If I went a little too fast, just rewind and you'll hear it again at the Plaza Theater. Nice place to be at. Nice atmosphere. Cool brother. Hey, he making things happen. He coming out with different movies, different genre movies. Um, all you actresses and actors and thespians that live in this area, get with me. I'm going to give you his information, and we're going to just make moves from there. We support the brother. We support all that you do. Hopefully I might be in town that weekend, so I'll come out and bring my camera, and we'll network and build with you and take pictures and blog about it and stuff like that. And I just appreciate you being on the show, and I held you long enough. I want to tell you stay on your square and you keep shining because you're doing your thing. Likewise, likewise, man. I appreciate y'all having me on, man, straight up. Thank you. I appreciate that. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it. I am your host for this evening. My name is G Holla. It's not Gula. It's not Guala. It's not Giola. But G Holla, G Holla.com, G Holla Radio. And you should be at Plaza Theater. Once again, red carpet is at 830 p.m. Eastern Time. For those of you who maybe live somewhere else, I get it. I get it. A lot of people traveling in town through the storm. I want y'all to be safe out there too as well. A lot of people are coming to Atlanta. Be safe out there too. If you're not familiar with I-20 and 285, man, stay in the right lane, which is the slower lane, and take your time. It's okay. You make sure you be at that Plaza Theater. It is 1049 Ponce de Leon Avenue, Northeast, Atlanta, GA, 30306. And, man, we are out. We appreciate y'all for uh, tuning in, subscribing, and following the show, and support white folks, man. Support it. Go go see it. We spend our money on everything else in this culture and this society that we don't need. We need to go see white folks and support this brother. And we are out, ladies and gentlemen. That is it. Everybody be safe. Be peaceful out there and um, stay dry. Have a good evening. That's the sound of a sale. And if you're a business owner, you can save on credit and debit card sales by switching to PNC. If we can't beat your current card processing fees, you could get a $1,000 gift card. Visit your local PNC branch or pnc.com slash switch and save to learn more. Restrictions apply, including fees used for comparison. Merchant services are provided by PNC Merchant Services and are subject to credit approval. For offer details, terms, and conditions, go to pnc.com slash switch and save or to any PNC branch. PNC Bank National Association Member FDIC. Association Member FDIC. Association Member FDIC. Association Member FDIC.